Yes. Okay, there we go. And uh, Yara and Mel, feel free to chat while this is going on. Great. So we're just kind of entering the show. Um, we, you know, what's really nice about this is that we could show our pieces side by side and give you um, a sense of scale for the pieces. Because a lot of times when we're seeing things in Instagram or on Facebook or on a website, it's just hard to tell, you know, physically how these uh, 2D pieces work. Mm -hmm. So later on, we'll tell you which pieces are mine and which are Yara's. Thank you. Uh, for now, we're giving you just a full scope of everything. <clears throat> Is there a quiz on which ones are yours and which ones are yours? <laughs> <laughs> With a door prize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. We there are some. Um, uh, spoilers, because you can see some of the labels. <laughs> and then I put a, a link in the chat for the complete show if um, if you want to go back and look at things. Um, and there's also a video in that link too. So um, a link to this video so that you can, you know, pause it if you want to see something in detail. It's really nice how Margaret was able to get so many of the nuances of the surfaces. Mm. And what I love about abstract art is, to me, it should just evoke an emotion. And there's just that kind of instant response sometimes. So don't be shy. If, like you see a painting and it just kind of, there's like a word that comes to mind. I had to put that one in for the February show. Mm. <laughs> it's a great one for Valentine's Day. Yep. <laughs> that was parts of float. <laughs> There's a person at the door. Mm. Yeah, what's great about where this gallery is situated is that there is a courtyard um, and there are uh, multiple doors with air passage. So if you're, you know, hesitant about viewing just because of indoors um, and our current um, pandemic, uh, when we, sh when we went in to hang things, it was really nice because there was so much airflow in the space. So it's a really airy, um, well-ventilated space. And, um, and that was super helpful um, in terms of uh, hanging the show and all of the uh, unique challenges this time brings of, okay, let's reverse engineer this. <laughs> Absolutely. And the um, gallery is open on Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to five. So if you guys want to go check it out in person, you could do have that with that. At a time in the gallery. Oh, uh, we can have 12 people at a time in the gallery. I'm gonna stop the share. That's what we were told. Yeah, that's what Roz, uh, Roz is understanding. So um, I can start the slideshow. Excellent. And that way we can go back to the pieces and see them in more detail. Give me just a second. And those of you that are here to see the main gallery as well, we'll be doing the slideshow for that in just a little bit. All right, give me just a second. I'm still kind of figuring this out. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and pin you. Uh, actually, once you get your share going, I think it'll stay that way. Yeah, it'll be solid. Okay. So we go through the artwork and the show. Um, feel free to ask any questions. I When it comes to explaining the art i think it's best to start with explaining that it's a really spontaneous process i'm gonna mute everybody and then uh you're gonna need to unmute yourself because we've got some background notes going on here. beautiful thank you thank you thank you thank you Okay, Mel, you have to unmute yourself now to talk and same with you, Yara. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. 
Great, thank you, Margaret. Um, so yeah, I'll go through the paintings. We can always go back to them. Um, I've got titles and information. Um, I was just saying that the, the paintings um, are very spontaneous. So intuition is kind of what leads the way to creating a painting, um, going back to this. Uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll just start, I'll save scraps and have little extra tidbits in the studio. And I don't really know when they're gonna make it into a painting, but this one has um, clips of newspaper, shredded newspaper. And um, same with this piece, it's um, considered you know, mixed media to add another media to the painting. So that just is a fun little extra detail. Um, with this, the more you look at it, the more hearts you start to see. So that was fun to play with that. Um, I, I love texture and um, this piece was created with something called a molding paste. So you're actually creating the texture first and then you're putting the painting over it. So it almost looks like the painting was scraped away, but instead it was built up from a layer underneath. Um, this is the, at least my largest painting in the show. It's cropped right here, but it's a pretty large, um, long painting, kind of that over the couch kind of size. And I'll show you this in another picture um, on the wall. And um, this one is, I had pretty, a lot of fun with this. When I do watercolors, um, they oftentimes don't make it into shows because it involves framing them. So framing, it just is one of those processes that somehow as an artist is not easy. So I was really excited to finally bring some of my favorite watercolors in to get framed. And um, this is called a prisma frame. If you look at the edges, there's no connection. It was all one piece of molded custom acrylic um, matte finish plastic. So it, um, it, it was really fun to just kind of play with the different colors because I think it really added to the different um, pieces of art and complements the colors. So those were pretty fun. Um, this is my only encaustic piece in the show. And encaustic, if you don't know, is uh, melted wax with pigment and tree resin. So it has to be melted at 175 degrees and um, applied to the surface. And at that point, you can rework it with heat. Um, it's, it's a really fun process. And you'll definitely see more of that um, in my next shows. This one is um, just evocative of, you know, fresh grass. I feel like the smell of fresh grass, the look of fresh grass is just, to me, it's very, um, my favorite part of spring. And um, Yara, you could take over when you have some paintings on here. I know this is one of your okay. favorites. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting. Um, Oftentimes I'll work in color fields. This painting has been through a lot of evolutions and I um, I think like a lot of painters and artists just fall in love with colors. So I had a new tube of Hans the yellow and just started acquiring all of these different yellows. Was just really um, excited to explore uh, those hues and to play with complementary tones. Um, and then in this there's uh, you know, a series of um, layers that have been built up. So there's a combination of um, sanding and painting that occurred. Um, so, you know, um, not everybody encourages people to touch the paintings, but you can touch the painting. It has a really interesting uh, soft finish to it, um, which is, uh, was just a very tactile um, piece to make. Um, I think there might be one more close-up slide of it. Um, it's actually a multimedia piece too. There is um, a canvas that's an additional piece of canvas that's been built up in this. So a combination of canvas and molding paste and layers and layers of paint. Um, so a, a lot of times a painting um, like this one will just become a friend of mine, something that I live with for six months and just continue the process of pouring and um, breaking away uh, different uh, fields in the painting. Yeah, and here uh, there's three paintings. So um, 
there are, um, you know, this, this ongoing theme of uh, striping uh, in the paintings as well as, you know, more free form abstraction. So um, I love to use masking in watercolor and I started adapting uh, masking in um, acrylic painting and just love the relief that different tapes um, could provide. Um, and then with the really kind of free form piece, it was really about uh, playing with line and opacities and, and seeing um, how far I could push this experiment to you know, get this sense of flow. So with this wall, I think this is a good chance if anybody wants to guess whose is whose. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're all mixed together here. <laughs> but you'd have to unmute your microphone if you wanted to talk. Make something better. Um, okay, so mine are the two on the right and the small encaustic piece. And then Yara's are the other three around. Just another view of that. They're all beautiful. I won. <laughs> I got Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. That wall really came together nicely. It, yeah, it's as if we really work together on the paintings, I feel like. <laughs> um, nice to see the size of them on the wall. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was important because I mean, even I was going to crop out the door and then I realized, no, the door gives you <laughs> that uh, right. Provision, right? So you know how big yeah. it is. Um, this one, I, I didn't mean to do it, but I definitely see an eye in the center with the giant eyelash coming out. Mm. And I, I named that one Visions. Was that intentional? No, sometimes, most of the time things just come up. And I just go with it. Sometimes I don't know what it is until it's done and then I analyze it afterward. So which one is Yara's on this wall? Bye-bye. The second one. Oh, like <laughs> <a> stripes. <laughs> you got it, yeah. I see something in that one I wanna, um, I wanna share. Yeah, please. A swimmer. Oh. Mm. Like which a, part? The blue. And then there's like bubbles mm. around it and they're oh. swimming that way. Oh, I like that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah, like scuba dancing. That was done through mm. liquid medium, right? Because Yara tends to use this method where she pours the paint. Yeah. And I, you know, um, I get really inspired by other people's work and processes. And um, <laughs> this painting, and now I'm forgetting the name of it, but they're, um, my partner works at the Exploratorium and there are these experiments that you can do. Maybe somebody can chime in um, and uh, they're um, where you can set up a series of events for happen to happen uh, where you, um, goodness, I can't think of the name of it, but it's a kind of a ridiculous contraption. You just make it, ah, Rube Goldberg, there we go. <laughs> so I made a Rube Goldberg um, experiment uh, over the summer and I really liked the results. And so this was kind of an extension of that. It wasn't as um, uh, ornate in the setup, um, but it's this idea of the, the spontaneous um, can bring about, um, you know, better than the controlled uh, results. And it was just, uh, yeah, um, a fun thing to do with the with the technique. Um, you know, with the Rube Goldberg, you're kind of pouring one thing at a time because you need the other objects to be fixed. With this, it was about um, laying down under painting and then painting wet into wet. So that field that the blue is going into, I think, was partially wet, uh, sprayed with water, and then a combination of of pouring paint um, from jars into that paint. Yeah, your process requires a certain level of patience that I don't have <laughs> because Yara will pour paint and it has to dry for several days sometimes, right? Yeah, and in my hundred year old house with the floors as they are, um, sometimes gravity works in mysterious ways too. <laughs> I do have a question for you, Yara. How much of a Rothko influence do you have? I would say a lot. I am, um, you know, Rothko and Bryce Martin right now are um, among some of my 
bigger influences. Uh, I also, um, you know, have a lot of influence in, with female artists. Um, I was looking at a lot of Elaine de Kooning last year. I'd read mm. Seventh Street Women and was really inspired um, by some of the stories that I read in that regarding people's process um, and thinking around studio time. Beautiful. No, it's, I love it's a lovely piece. Yes. It's a really good one. Now these two, uh, in the in the spirit of ex of experiment, um, I have a friend. I have a couple of friends who are tea purveyors, and um, I found a lot of comfort in drinking tea over this last year, um, which I'm sure uh, many of you can relate to. Um, and um, in these paintings, my friend Zoe has a tea company called Fox and Moon. And so I just fell in love with some of the colors of the teas. And so I was working with chalk and with acrylic and um, and with pouring tea for these stains and um, and then using um, uh, <laughs> uh, using uh, uh, for the complete uh, kind of a golden acrylic uh, um, matte finish so they could be more archival um, <laughs> of, of the affixative for the for the end result. Um, but the teeth were really fun because the way that they would, the organic matter would leave little fragments on the canvas and uh, and then over time kind of imprint um, patterns. And thanks for the, the links, uh, Steve. <laughs> you got to hear all about that that book quite a bit and uh, yeah, big pitch for mm -hmm. for that. It was really, really um, impactful in, in thinking about um, so many things. Um, uh, it looks like Darby, you can unmute your microphone. Hi, yeah, I wanted to ask you, Melissa, about the one with the many circles that look like donuts. Oh, okay, going back. <laughs> Oops, yeah. Oh. That okay. one in the orange, oh. orange frame. Okay, the, the orange frame. So that, this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody said it looked like calamari. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> which sounded really good when they said that. Um, I, yeah, it, I guess I started, I most likely started with the um, small pen marks. And I've just been loving watercolor and how, um, just the play with it and when it bleeds into each other and just it's a little bit it reminds me of a little bit of encaustic because when you're using this medium you don't quite you can't quite control it as well when you're trying to do an abstract method and that's what I like about it so it's I mean this probably looks to me like I don't remember exactly but I probably got some new a new palette of paints and wanted to test every color I mean this this is just what I do it's like in it's all about just playing and having fun. I oftentimes like will flip the paper as I'm doing it to try to challenge myself to um, just keep it moving, keep some momentum going. That's cool to know. I do that in, with photography too. Ah, okay. <laughs> Turn it over and see where there's a blank area and what I can, how I can change the composition a little bit. Yeah, and with watercolor, like you, I can't really go back in and change it so much. I can just add to it. So it's um, a little bit of like paint it and leave it, let it dry, um, see how it looks when it's finished. I see the word uh, go in the middle Thank of that you. paint, in, in the middle of that. I don't oh, know if you can hear me. I was that. just gonna say that too. And I, I it, that as well. Yeah, there's such energy in it. It's got this go kind of energy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. A great name, turn and twirl. It yeah. says go, go turn and twirl. And if you look closely, there's some subliminal glasses up there too above go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Black glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Not of course. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so um, okay, so I forgot where I was at. Let's see. We were back at. I can flip through, but I think um, we were going this direction. Okay, we're at Yara's T. Okay, now we're on to Yara's individual pieces. Yeah, um, and I had a chance to look it up. I was remiss of just not um, thinking of this person's name. Um, um, and, um, you know, 
there are times where I feel like, oh, I really miss our trips to the the MoMA and, yeah. and you know, I'm half grateful for it. Um, I was reading about Helen Frankenthaler's process and I was just really inspired to, you know, try things on um, less primed canvases or to play with pouring and to think about um, the color fields that she was doing and the boldness, really. I was just uh, so moved by that. Um, when you're working with masking or when you're working with color fields, sometimes you wanna keep going with this process of reduction, of cleaning up um, the field and, and reducing and reducing. So you have this kind of edit. Um, but then when I look at um, these canvases of, and photos of Helen sitting in a room surrounded by color, I think, well, you know, maybe with these little pieces, they could be part of this bigger energy. And so I just tried to think about, um, you know, uh, during this process of, uh, of having more studio time, of the connection to other artists and to the, the craft of painting. Yara, what does masking mean? Oh, masking like with tape or oh, okay. with like a watercolor. Mel might use it too. You can use a masking fluid too. And, and so you use that as to keep a blank space or to keep a space free from the color around it or how, how does that work? Absolutely, yeah. So with the, um, with the masking fluid, you can keep the area um, free and then it's almost like a gum that you can peel off. And okay. then with the tape, uh, and like with the gum, it typically, you brush it on like you would a clear paint and it's just remarkable with watercolors. With paint, um, like acrylic, you can use, you know, my favorite like blue tape or you can uh, go to an art store and get um, a more archival tape. I'm like, in this one, you can see a lot of the process. What I love about it is it's kind of like printmaking where you get this relief of um, things of, oh, I think it's gonna be this way. But then in the process of an imprint, um, you might have, or of the tape, you might create imprints. So sometimes I won't put the tape down exactly right because I want a little bit of leaching underneath and for the lines to have an imprint. Mm -hmm. And then you almost have, um, depending on how you build up the canvas, um, tracks that you can paint into. So mm -hmm. it's a very tactile thing for the person uh, painting to, to feel these grooves, um, but also from the viewer standpoint, my hope is that that, that surface texture also has, you know, another um, area for you uh, to see and to, to look into so uh, that the light can capture in different ways. Thank you. Yeah. Yara, the new this blue one, one was a really good example of masking, right? Yeah, this one is a really, and this is on a clay board. So the surface tension on this is a lot more stiffness than the canvas, right? So it's the surface is just kind of pushing back and pushing back. Um, whereas the canvas, you know, it's going to soften and, um, and this, you can just kind of get these immediate results. And I, you know, with this, I, I've been playing with this technique a little bit. Um, I'll use different, um, uh, types of acrylic. So with this, with that white, you're seeing the uh, results of fluid acrylics that are like a fast acrylic. They're just going to move across the canvas is like a, like a race car. Um, whereas if I'm taking something out of a tube, even if I'm mis mixing it with, um, with medium, it's not going to go that fast. And with this, it's almost like an ink that you can disperse across mm -hmm. um, the, the plane. And it's, it's so much fun. Um, I have bear witness to that because I, I will sometimes be painting back to back and I'll look over and I'm like, whoa, what did you just do? Like, it's really fun to just see that, you know, splash of something. And there's almost times where I admittedly, I'll look over and I'm like, did she ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then no, because once it dries and you start peeling off those layers, that big puddle of blue is only a subtle puddle in the top right mm -hmm. so it's 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 very much like this tension of letting go in the process and then seeing you know how it dries and what comes away with that so it's very fun Yara I have a question on that that painting the blue one that yeah. I just saw um it looks like there's um words 
on some of the lines. Is this a mixed media piece with paper or uh, uh, it's because I can't see the the detail. Yeah, no, this one, I don't have um, a newsprint. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Right, I can see where you might think there's newsprint strips. Yeah. In this. It's really just that, um, that uh, fluid acrylic um, that I've overlaid on top of um, layers of paintings. This is an uh, interesting piece because clayboard um, is this like, uh, it's basically just a clay over masonite. And so what it's like is almost like watercolor in that um, your, um, your saturation point with the pigment might get to a point where you um, overdo it. Um, so it's not the same maybe as a canvas where you can just keep going in and, and you can um, play with it and, and build up the canvas. With this, you have so much white in the clay board, but if you obscure all the light, you're gonna lose it. But I, uh, I'm really gonna push it here. Um, I have, you know, in that kind of king's blue, some opaque paints, and then underneath, um, going on a different axis, there um, is uh, underpainting in yellow. Mm -hmm. um, but those, and those white lines, you know, really, um, yeah, the way that it almost created, um, yeah, like a print. Uh, this was done with um, um, just a regular masking tape. So it didn't have as much adhesion. And, you know, um, for any painters out there, I imagine you could probably do things with cuts of fabric or news or um, paper bags of just playing with this. Um, I had an art teacher that always encouraged me to make my own paintbrushes. So um, this is kind of an extension of that. Elena, did you have a question? You have to unmute your microphone. Yeah, yeah, I was going oh. to say yes. <laughs> no, I just wanted to uh, make sure the lady that I spoke before, she can go to V options and increase the size. You can do 100% and 200% and you can go into the detail of the painting. Oh. You can see close. It's a close up. You see on top, right by oh. your viewing screen, there's a V option, yeah. you can go to 100 and you can see if you... Oh. Stay with oh, that painting one second, you. you will be able okay. to see that. Thank you, Elena. No worries. So cool. <laughs> I thank would you. like to see you guys, um, see a video of y'all painting. Do, do, do either one of you have videos? I know, I think Mel, years ago, you mm -hmm. might've done like a, I think you did a sped up version of you setting up your studio one time. Yeah, but I should do that videos. again, like a time yeah. lapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the, the nudge. I think that we, we should definitely do that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. For it's sure. For people who have never like painted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I with some of these pieces, they become something so different than what the final you know, result yeah. is that it would be pretty fascinating to see that. Yeah. Um, so now we're going back to Yara's detail of the tea. Yeah. Um, so this you know, piece together with that. So. Yeah, I felt like with painting, you know, and with abstract painting, and I think I'll speak for myself. Um, I don't know if other painters feel this way. I enter them kind of like the, I might have an idea, but the painting has a story that it wants to tell me that unfolds. And so that I find fascinating um, of what the reflection process can be and how it can inform you. So you might think I'm going to do this and here's this practice that tells you a little bit about yourself and um you know that when is it done uh process I think is what's so helpful of having a partner um when you're painting is that you can have that reflection process together too and say okay this is informing and you know that trust and that experience kind of comes into play of being able to say, oh, but there's this area I'm kind of precious about and I'm just not sure how to move on. <laughs> so yeah, with these close-ups, you can kind of see some of the imprints on these lines of, um, of where the T was working. Um, I think without the um, in-person studio time, a lot of 
well, some of my paintings were about restraint, especially these two. It's like, okay, walk away. Let this just be. Yeah, I admire the simplicity and the openness of this. I don't think I could have restrained from filling in the white. <laughs> it's the first. <laughs> Oh, I hate to interrupt, but maybe another five minutes for you guys. Oh, then yeah, we're, we're on the last rest of the gallery. That's perfect, because this is the last detail shot. Oh, and we can go back and rewind to any pieces if you guys want to see more of any particular piece. Yeah, and this one, um, you know, I that Honda Yellow uh, was one of the inspirations. I picked up a book um, at actually a bookstore right near your shop. Melissa, um, uh, and I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's wonderful. Um, Diesel or Diesel's not there anymore. Yeah, that's that's the one. Is it it's still not there? Say booksellers. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was, um, I believe it's called the, biggest uh, book. the Story of Colors. And so it talks about the um, the social, scientific, and cultural. Um, um, circumstances of how colors arose. And so they're really fascinating. You can get into, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, some of the mysteries around blues um, and that's been in the news lately, uh, but the histories around yellows and, um, you know, the, um, the area uh, that brought this on was, um, boy, uh, I must've been finishing this around, uh, or working on this around October. And I just was like, I just need some, some energy. I need something to a little, uh, uh, something that is going to feel like going into, um, a field of daffodils. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's perfect. So we'll just do a quick run through of everything. That one is very expansive, really beautiful. Beautiful work. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful work. I love yeah. hearing about how you actually did the pieces. That was very yeah. interesting. Very much so. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. So this one fun. I forgot to see it was made with a palette knife. So I swiped on the, the um, paint instead of with a paintbrush. So. Wow. Kind so, of like yeah. Pollock, you play like Pollock for a little bit, right? <laughs> it wasn't really splattering as much as it was scraping. <laughs> Bravo, I get this even. Yeah, it's like how you put jam on your toast. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Both really complement each other really well. Thank yes, you. I agree, definitely, very much. Thank you all. So yeah. Like Thank you. I like the Zoom. Um, method like the way we're meeting too because we got to hear so much more than we would have mm -hmm. yeah one yeah very one. much it really worked yeah. thank yeah. you so much thank and are you. we going to see now the well, gallery every, is over everybody hang around um i'm now going to play the um thank um, you melanyara thank you. Gallery, thank you, and Mel any of the artists that are part of the other show who mm -hmm. are here can have a chance to talk about their work and uh, if we've got time at the end and people want to come back and see more of Yara and Mel's work, we can always switch back to uh, their stuff at the end. So let me do my little share here. Get this into full. So this name, as you can see, it's uh, Alone Together.
Oops. I just wanted to, um, I thought I saw Irena, Irena come on and her work was this next one up here, these beautiful little pieces here. So if you want to talk about it, Irena, if you're still here, you're going to need to unmute to talk. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the share. Uh, and let's see. There it goes smaller. And so, um, how many of our artists are still here? Who's still hanging in here? Kathy, you had some work in there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your work? I've uh, muted everybody. So anyone who wants to talk has to unmute themselves. Marianne, you're there too. Ah, Rena doesn't have a, a mic, so that's why she couldn't talk. I don't really have a whole lot to say about mine, except for uh, when, when we, said we're having a show of alone together i was like oh i don't have anything like that and then i went through my stuff and i went oh i have quite a bit here <laughs> of you know that there's so much that we have that um you know whether subconsciously or consciously of being together and being alone is is a big part of our life and especially with this pandemic so um anyway how do we know which one pieces are yours, Marianne? Let me uh, go back and share the screen here and we can go back and I can show you some of Marianne's. And I have to make this bigger and let's go back a little bit in here and we'll find Marianne's. Unfortunately, I don't have a nice slideshow like um, there's one. There's one right there of the two boats. And Kathy, who we're going to get talking, was in here too. And here's another, no, that's Susan Kendall's. You had one on the other wall too, didn't you? There's another one of Kathy Rice's. Okay. And Where's your other ones, Marianne? On the other wall. The other wall. I, There's that one there. With the two. There you go. Straight right ahead. Right there. <laughs> the, lower, the lower right there. Mm, cool. Yeah, the, uh, the pathway going on the, the uh, landscape. Yeah. Oh. You also had the two boats, Marianne? The two boats are mine, yeah. I really Beautiful. Did. And then. Uh, Where was that inspired from, if I could ask? That was from a Thomas Shallow uh, workshop. <laughs> uh -huh. So it was a picture that you viewed or something? Yes. OK, beautiful. Did we have another one? Oh, you're, you've got the, the, water, one the, the water lilies and then oh. the, the sunset up on, on the top there. Nice. Can't really see them very well. I don't know if you can zoom in on it or not. I can't, unfortunately. No. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, uh, unless I had zoomed when I did the, uh, the thing, uh, somebody was saying that you can actually um, make your screen go bigger um, by one of the, the little icons in the corner. I haven't tried it yet. I did, I did know on top of the view options, you can go 150% and you can see precisely. You the, can, but you uh, can't move around, right? So it's you just can move around. the center. But that the, goes directly to There you can move painting. in. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that with the pond. What are those called again? Lilies? The water lilies. Water lilies, yeah. There's a lot of depth there. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, um, Kathy, you had a few pieces in here too. Did you have some on this wall? I just, I just have one and it's on the opposite wall. On the other wall. 
So next, we go. next to her, uh, Marianne's no. boat. Boats. Next to my boat. Next to her boats. <laughs> Is that one there? Part? Yeah. This really <laughs> nice one of the little, of the dog and the girl walking. Right. This was actually, I mean, from a photo from a long time ago. And um, it's my daughter when she was eight and now she's in her 40s. <laughs> oh, wow. A dog that we had, we had a lot of Australian shepherds through the years. And uh, it just struck me how much pets are comforting in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of new pets have found homes <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, there's such great companions. Mm -hmm. It's and good to be together with them when we're alone, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I almost see a piano there. Oh yeah, it is almost like yeah, the walkway she's on is almost yeah. like playing a piano. Like it's a walkway, yeah. but that picture would look really nice walkway. by a piano. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> playing the piano like in that movie with the Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We just watched that movie the other night. My nine-year-old just saw it for the first time like two nights ago. So that's probably on my mind. <laughs> yeah, green is such a challenging color. I just have to say, I I find the depth with green is maybe one of the biggest painterly challenges. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this is when we lived in Bridgeport, California, and we were always out in green all the time <laughs> and Aspen and old roads and all that and pets <laughs> so it's also yeah. part of how memory comes into your pandemic time too <laughs> yeah it's beautiful during the year and uh so i'd are, actually done it before and then i did it again the, recently but um i had a lot of enjoyment doing it nice it's watercolor so so, BZ, did we have one of your photographs in here? No, I didn't enter. You didn't. Okay, I was thinking that I had seen something of yours. Uh, Chris, are you here to now? I know you were here earlier, but I, you might have taken off. And I think Irina left. Who else is still here? Was Roz there? Uh, <laughs> Roz never showed up tonight, so darn. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess I get to talk a little bit because I have a pieces in here too. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. So uh, this is one of my pieces here. Uh, there was a point in my life that I thought I was going to make my living as a marine painter. And <laughs> so I did a whole series of boat paintings and this is one of them. Let me see if I can get it so it's a little crisper. Just a wee bit crisper. Uh, but I was just uh, really enjoying the solitude and the feeling of not necessarily being lonely, but being alone in a really lovely place. And so there's this one pair of thongs on the back of the boat. That person, maybe they're inside the boat. Maybe they've gone swimming. We're not really sure which. Uh, but just that alone, but not lonely, together with the world feeling. And then um, in the corner up here, if we can get a better view of it. The um, tree scene up above, you can't see it really well, but there's two figures walking down the, uh, uh, the fall leaf trees uh, in between the fall leaves. Um, that was done from a photograph that I took on one of my many walks around Alameda during the pandemic. Uh, and there was these two young teenage boys walking down the street together. Uh, I don't remember if they had masks on, didn't matter. They were far enough for me that it didn't matter, but they were having a good time being just the two of them by themselves. And then back a little further, we have one more. Sorry, the lights on this one. Uh, so the one at the top is a, um, a lake reflection scene. It was actually a demo that I did for my painting class. Um, and it's from some photographs that I took when I was able to be the artist in residence at Whiskeytown Lake. Uh, and 
the fun thing about being the artist in residence is that you could walk around the park 24 seven. You could go out first thing in the morning, you could stay until sunset, uh, where normally, you know, I would go out to Whiskey Town and only be there during the middle of the day. And so it was really nice to see some of the early morning light and see some of the animals around. I did actually put that deer in this particular scene, although I had seen them elsewhere, but not right there. Uh, but just that sort of feeling of a space that is beautiful that you can be alone in yet be together in. So those were all my pieces and I don't know if we have anybody else. So we could go back to doing some more things with um, uh, Mel and Yara if we would like, unless there's some more people from our front one that are here. I'm gonna stop the share and This one. All right. I'm so glad everybody was able to come tonight. So uh, if you guys have some more questions for anybody or uh, if Yara and uh, Mel would like us like to talk more about their exhibit, uh, that would be lovely. I see that um, there's one person that joined late and it's Judy. So um, I could always go through the slideshow again real quick. Judy, if you have any questions, you can unmute your microphone. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> I ended up no, no up. worries. So I'll do a quick screen share and then we'll say our goodbyes. Um, yeah. Let's see. Here is the artwork close up. Um, let's see. Okay. You see it? Yeah, we're seeing it now. This okay, great. So... Let's see. Hmm. It's not allowing me to go through again. That's strange. I have no control over that. Oh, interesting. Um, let me see. Yara, I was going to ask you, you mentioned oh, yeah. you knew how to make your own paint brushes. Will you, do you teach a class in that? Because that would be really fun. I don't, but I, uh, and I would be happy to, um, to tell you what I've done, but I'd be, it, that would be an interesting class um, to do, uh, because it would be really fun. Um, you know, I grew up um, in a town that many of you guys might know, it's called Arcata, um, and there's some really similar um, uh, trees as we have here, so um, if you are in the forest and you want to, um, you know, sometimes it's really fun to grab, uh, you know, just fallen um, needles and branches. Uh, Bryce Martin famously, you know, attaches his brushes to the ends of um, twigs and branches. But what I find is actually, if you get some nice pine needles that are, and you dry them, and then you, um, take a rubber band. So you've got these beautiful, like when they've gotten to the beet orange, right? You can try them when they're still kind of sappy too. And then you take a rubber band and you've almost created like a whisk, like you would use for your green tea or something. And you get this beautiful uh, fan. Um, that's one of my favorite things. I also, and I don't know if anybody else does this, maybe Melissa does, I so will baby some paintbrushes, but I also will have some that, um, that I love to cut. So I'll give them haircuts to get like unusual texture. So, you know, maybe over the sink or something so, or over a dish so you don't get weird textures um, on your canvases, but um, that can be really marvelous. You can get kind of a step to things or um, you can have, you know, places where things get a little more spiky and then you won't have like a standardized um, lines. I had an idea the other day and I haven't implemented it, but the end of a leak would make a really beautiful uh, painting, uh, paintbrush. Oh my gosh. Because there's roots that are coming out of it. So there's an idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, demonstration artist on Wednesday night said that she likes to just pick random sticks out of the yard and use those as either pens or paintbrushes when she's working. And she gets some really nice little interesting lines and textures with it. 
My sister made me a wonderful painting of a red bell pepper using um, Q-tips. And she actually painted it on a cardboard, like the side of a cardboard box. <laughs> she was really <laughs> poor and had like no, she had paint and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's perfect. Some of the most awesome. beautiful art comes out of just inventiveness and just yeah. limit. The more you limit your supplies, sometimes it makes you really push the medium a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah, so with the encaustic, Melissa has to get really creative because it uh, transforms paintbrushes and, and then the tools can be quite different. Yeah, as soon as you leave the paintbrush off of the hot plate, it starts to harden like, like a candle, like it's a piece of yeah. a chunk of wax. And then you've got to melt it back down together, um, get the paint to melt off back onto the surface and then kind of do a balance between um, the heat gun. Some people use a flame torch. I don't trust myself with a flame torch, so heat gun is perfect. Um, <laughs> but this this is an example of just like getting that brush super hot, super wet and melted, and then just being, just swiping as quickly as you can before it starts to harden. Huh. Um, Margaret, you mentioned a Wednesday night thing and I was just, it just occurred to me how cool it would be to just watch people do art. Do you have so like, one, yes, once a month like on the uh, once a month on the second Wednesday, uh, we have guest artists do a, a two hour demo, and cool. uh, so which is really cool. We might have to see if Yara or Mel would be willing to do one with their uh, yeah. with their abstract stuff. But it is really fun. We try and get different people. Uh, it started with the fact that we weren't able to do our plein air paint out this last year. And we wanted a way to get more of our artists visible. And so we started with some of our plein air artists and now, now we've been bringing in some others. And so uh, if you look on our website under special events, you'll see the upcoming, what's gonna be the next one. Cool. Thank Hi. you. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity, Margaret. And thank you. This worked out really great. Margaret? Yeah. Well, thank I, you. I don't, I don't know if you can see me or not. I can, Jeannie. Oh, OK. I was just going to say to these two women not to forget that you can, you can be in any of our shows that you feel you know that the, the, the theme works for you because it's always good to have um, people participate in our shows. Yes, we are now members, so we can yeah. keep yeah. up with the events. And yeah. uh, even non-members, so anyone who's watching, who is interested in the center, we're always looking for new artists and uh, are interested in having people uh, uh, you know, do to be part of our group shows as well as be in the signature gallery, which can either be a single or a small group like this. <clears throat> nice show, ladies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Bye. Wonderful. It was really nice. We didn't have to look for parking. I know, right? <laughs> That's right. And around the center, that can be hard. <laughs> and the best thing is we got to see your faces without a mask. Yeah. All right. Great. Oh, my gosh. It was 7.06 and I said to my son, we have to go to an art show. And then over here to the dining room table, I forgot about it. So I didn't like do makeup or anything. And I was just, oh, well. I'm in my pajamas. Totally. <laughs> Uh, this is good. As long as you're comfortable, <laughs> we're happy that you participated. It made it made all the effort worth it. Good, absolutely. It was a great yeah, show. Thank you. So all of the people um, who made this possible, and for all of you for sharing your Friday evening with us. Um, at, you know, as we go into um, a long weekend, it's just so nice of you to make the time um, on a Friday night. Your support is uh, so appreciated. It's uh, one thing to work in your studio and it's another thing to be part of a community. Mm -hmm.